Hello everyone. Today in the subject of medical microbiology, we are going to study about the clinical features of viral diseases. So in last lecture, we have already covered about the general introduction of the virus and its classification. Now the objective of this lecture is to learn more and more about the clinical features that are involved in viral diseases. So what are the symptoms, what are the features, how you identify a particular disease. So uh, what do you expect out of this? What is the outcome? Uh, you will be able to understand the fundamental applications of uh, techniques or the methodology that is employed in the treatment of uh, such uh, contagious viral infections. Right? So, uh, what are the symptoms, what are the precautionary steps uh, that are needed to be taken that we are going to discuss in this topic. So, viral infection type treatment of the like to uh, study and understand all these uh, things in this lecture. So, what is a virus? Viruses are uh, unicellular organisms with genetic material, DNA or RNA, that are surrounded by a code made up of protein. We all know that capsule that surrounds the virus. A viral infection is the proliferation of a harmful virus within the body. Symptoms of the viral illness are due to tissue damage and associated immune response to the host. Right, uh, so whenever you are going to have a viral infection or a viral disease, the symptoms that you will have will be because of viral illness uh, that, uh, that is being caused because of the tissue uh, damage that you are certainly uh, experiencing because of the viral infection and clearing of all viral infection. That is also associated with the immune response. Uh, you you can see there in the image Brucella rooster virus B Z B and molluscum from from K Jusom and herpes simplex virus. So you can uh, very easily see all these things. How these uh, you can easily identify that uh, if the uh, patient is having herpes or BZ B. So how you can very easily identify the viral infection, okay, in an individual. So, uh, what is a viral disease? Moving on to the uh, main point, virus are very small and infectious agents. They are smaller than the bacteria also, right? Uh, their uh, size is just few uh, hundred nanometers. They are made up of a piece of genetic material such as DNA or RNA that's enclosed in a protein code. As you all know, uh, viruses uh, invade cells in your body and use components of those cells to help them multiply. So this is the basic scenario uh, that how a virus survives and how a virus spread infection from uh, one place to another. The problem with the virus is that uh, it always got a problem. The virus has a problem that is that it lacks the molecular machinery. Okay, because of that, a uh, virus cannot function as a uh, living cell. Okay, it has only the genetic material that is required and a protein cover over it. That's it, end of the story. So, uh, viruses do not have the molecular machinery that is uh, required for the synthesis of protein and normal functions of protein. Viruses invade cells in your body and use components of those cells to help them multiply. So, every time uh, the virus are trying to invade inside your body once they invade inside your body and after that they capture the molecular material of your cell and they are just going to increase their number and they are going to multiply. This process often damages or destroys, destroys the infected cell. 
So you can uh, very easily see the uh, case of COVID infection. Why people are dying? Because uh, people are not are not dying because of the COVID virus. Okay. The simple function of COVID virus is that it will invade in your body, and its target is, is your internal respiratory system. So it will damage the cells of your lungs. So because the cells are damaged in your lungs, they are no more able to perform simple task of respiration and because of that your blood it does not receive enough amount of oxygen that has to be transported uh, back to different cells of the body as a result of that a patient dies because of a series that he experiences a series of organ failure Okay, uh, like uh, in a simple manner, uh, you have a switchboard and you switch off all the uh, lights in a room one by one. So this is how a patient dies in COVID infection. Slowly and slowly, one by one, all the organs, they stop to work. This process often uh, damages or destroys uh, infected cells. A viral disease is an is any illness or health condition caused by a virus okay so um, there are many types of viral diseases so here you can see the example in the figure is that example of uh, hiv infection in uh, targeted t cells so the main target of uh, hiv virus is t cells so anyhow it has to make uh, the T cells uh, non function right? So here you can see the uh, progeny of HIV virus is trying to uh, change uh, the scenario of the cells. Okay. So transcription of proviral DNA. So here in the uh, first cell you can see that uh, inside the nucleus trans uh, transcription, the copying of uh, of proviral DNA is taking place and second step is synthesis of viral components so all the viral components are being synthesized one by one okay so in a very differential manner these components are being synthesized in one by one and all the components that are required or the spare parts that are required to uh, construct a virus are being synthesized one by one okay so a third point is uh, the assembly of the virus. So all the spare parts have been, uh, all the series have been produced. Now what is going to take place? These things are going to combine with each other. And fourth step is the budding of virus uh, from the host cell. And because of that, uh, it uh, reassembles and forms a perfect HIV virus and it leaves the cell. Now you can see that progeny of HIV uh, virus leaves the cell. So uh, moreover, uh, what is the main function? Main function is that it has to increase it, its number. And HIV virus will uh, do this uh, in an active infection and in latent in infection, chromosomal DNA and proviral DNA. It will uh, go into the production of T helper cells of the immune system and uh, uh, inject its DNA into that and because of that your immune system will become weak it will not function and virus will fully thrive inside your body and as a result of that you will not die because of HIV you will die because of common cold only your immune system is so weak that it uh, won't be able to protect itself um, from any sort of uh, simple allergic reaction on. So uh, this condition is uh, has been proven to be fatal. This condition is really very harmful uh, for the individual and for the body also. And uh, all these things that are uh, simply responsible for maintaining uh, immune system are affected uh, directly or indirectly by HIV virus. So viruses are small particles of genetic material, either DNA or RNA, that are surrounded by a protein. 
some virus also have fatty acid that is also known as envelope covering they are incapable of reproducing on their own so uh, from where they uh, uh, get this uh, fatty envelope on on them like for example in the earlier diagram i was showing you that uh, these viruses uh, they uh, just travel from one cell to another in this process the when they are leaving a cell they uh, capture its portion of phospholipid bilayer and because of that uh, as your immune system can only identify the cells on the basis of self and non self because of those things only so they uh, do not identify the virus as a potential hazardous material and as a result of that immune system uh, or the virus evades the immune system completely viruses depend on organisms they infect called host for their very survival so viruses they just use the host for their own benefit it is not like that uh, viruses are trying to kill the host okay if the host is really weak uh, uh, and uh, have a very bad immune system it will get killed okay so uh, but the whole so survival of the virus depends on the rate of multiplication okay and because of multiplication uh, they require host cells the okay, animal cells they require uh, viruses get a bad rap they, uh, but they also perform many important functions uh, for humans plants animals and animals so uh, you would be quite surprised to know that viruses have been modifying themselves uh, since the day the first cell came into existence and uh, from that day onwards they have been modifying themselves and uh, current in the current scenario you can see the third wave of covid virus is starting and the delta uh, variant of covid virus is in full action so this is how a virus uh, at such a fast pace it changes itself right so here you can see that uh, uh, this virus is approximate in the diagram is of 50 nanometers it has spikes uh, for attaching on specific cell surfaces envelope that is has uh, obtained from our simple host cell protein coat the covering of genetic material and nucleic acid the genetic code dna or rna in the form of dna or rna so you can see the design of virus is really very simple simple and effective so with the help of the uh, these things it can readily infect any of the uh, living cell very easily and it is of really very small size and very effective uh, and having a perfect design uh, that is required to infect the cells so on these basis on this behalf viruses are uh, really very cap uh, capable and uh, really very effective for this uh, scenario and this purpose and uh, viruses have been uh, really lethal in the human history and uh, they have been proven to be uh, very effective uh, when it comes to eradicating a huge amount of population because in early days when the uh, uh, technology of vaccination was not present the virus was really lethal and really fatal for the human population so for example some viruses uh, protect the host from other infection viruses also participate uh, in the process of evolution by transferring genes among different species in biomedical research scientists use virus to insert new genes into cells so they also serve as a very effective uh, vector when it comes to transferring genes into the cells and virus uh, do that thing very effectively so scientists are exploiting viruses for their own use when most people hear the word virus they think of disease causing pathogenic virus uh, such as the common cold influenza chicken pox hiv sars uh, cov2 and others viruses uh, can 
affect many areas in the body, including reproductive, respiratory, and gastrointestinal system. So uh, they mostly affect uh, the areas to which they are very specific in nature. They are not going to harm any other thing uh, of uh, that is not of their interest. Right? They can also affect uh, the liver, brain, and skin. Research uh, reveals that viruses are implicated in many cancers as well. Because of that, uh, some uh, viruses are, have also been reported to be a uh, cause of cancer in the human beings. So, types of viral infection. Respiratory viral infection. So, first of all, we are going to deal with that. Respiratory viral infections affect uh, the nose, lungs and air. They spread by inhalation of uh, droplets containing virus particles, frequent hand washing, covering your nose and mouth while coughing and sneezing. So, uh, anything that can uh, be uh, that has been proven to be very contagious, that uh, transferring of droplets, okay, transferring of aerosols and all those things. A uh, virus can easily travel in the small or mass and all those things. Okay. So, and avoid contact uh, with infected people. Helps prevent the spread of respiratory infection. Avoiding touching your nose, mouth or eyes and disinfecting hard surfaces also helps. So, uh, Overall, if you want to uh, avoid a viral infection, the prescribed steps that are that have been uh, advertised uh, for the protection against uh, COVID virus are very much the same. If you want to uh, avoid any sort of viral infection, the protocol is the very same. Okay, avoid touching um, your nose, mouth, or eyes, and disinfecting hard surfaces also help so you should not always be touching your face your nose your eyes all the time so rhinovirus this is the main cause of common cold among the people along with 200 other viruses symptoms like coughing sneezing headache or and sore throat usually last for two weeks so rhinovirus causes uh, common cold and uh, in the long term in the long term, uh, it is really very uncomfortable disease, and there has yet there has been no cure for uh, such infection, and uh, the people have to just wait and, and watch in uh, what amount of time that particular virus is going to leave their body. So seasonal influenza, this affects uh, a significant percentage of the population world over. The symptoms that are uh, more severe than the common cold and include uh, body aches and severe fatigue. So influenza, uh, all the viral diseases, they have this common feature, fatigue and fever, like uh, you have a common cold always. Right? A respiratory and cyclical virus. This virus can cause upper respiratory like cold as well as lower respiratory tract infection like pneumonia. So uh, you always have to be why you are always recommended to wear masks. Because uh, in order to protect your overall system of respiration, your upper respiratory system and your lower respiratory system significantly. It can uh, be uh, severe in the elderly and among toddlers and infants. The people who are whole immune, whose immune system is really weak and the people whose immune system is not up to the mark, okay, or immune system is compromised because of the age, those type of people are uh, really very, uh, very much uh, uh, compromised and they are much more prone to uh, receive any sort of uh, such type of viral infection. So here you can see that 
uh, viral infection and what are the body parts uh, your uh, body parts are much more prone to infection like eye infection uh, parotitis pneumonia uh, myelitis and pruritus gastroenteritis and std or uh, sexually transmitted diseases skin infection hepatitis cardiovascular problem and gangliomastomitis uh, and common cold and cephalitis meningitis all those things are very significant and uh, much in your body is really very much prone to viral infection the problem is that because in this very long duration of time right uh, we have covered so much part uh, and we have covered so much uh, uh, development in the last uh, one century but still our uh, system of medicine is not much developed in context of viral disease if you want to uh, see our status in viral disease we are still very much helpless okay uh, while if you want to uh, kill any bacteria if you want to move on to some uh, other kind of uh, disease treatment you can easily get the access to the medicines because uh, we have uh, developed uh, antibiotics thank, thank to alexander fleming and uh, with the use of penicillin penicillin notatum he developed a lot of things but still in the case of uh, virus we just only depend on the uh, principles that have been laid down by robert koch of uh, uh, vaccine development and because of that only uh, we are able to make so many uh, vaccines that are effective on covid virus also. so as a result of this there has uh, there is a vast uh, gap that still requires a lot of de development in case of viral diseases because still uh, our technology and our uh, patchy of medicine is not at all effective against the viral infection we still need a lot of development and a lot of uh, therapies to be enhanced and to be effective in nature so cert, uh, certain viruses like uh, the ones uh, that cause chicken pox cold sores uh, may be inactive or latent after the initial infection. For example, you may have uh, a cold sore that erupts and then heals. The cold sore virus uh, remains in your cells in a dormant state. Later, a trigger like stress, sunlight or something else may reactivate the virus and lead to new symptoms. The virus uh, makes more copies of itself, releases new virus particles and creates more host cells. So uh, what will happen, you got some sort of viral infection and it healed after a significant period of time. But in that uh, uh, period of time, that uh, virus has uh, readily transformed itself. The virus has uh, readily uh, uh, spread the infection and it became ineffective or inactive. But uh, that virus is still present in your cells and uh, as soon as it is going to get the favorable conditions, it will reactivate and again cause the infection, the new symptom. So, virus is always making uh, new copies of itself and trying to kill more and more host cell in the process because it uh, wants to increase its number significantly. And it always lacks the molecular machinery that is required by a living cell in order to uh, manufacture the protein. So respiratory infection, right, uh, like rhinovirus, like a, a cause infection in uh, upper respiratory uh, uh, system, seasonal influenza, uh, that is responsible for another kind of severe disease of respiratory system, respiratory virus, RSV. So all these infections, they are uh, classified into uh, the upper respiratory infection and the lower respiratory infection. So, uh, in this uh, current scenario, 
Now, both the kind of respiratory infections are very much uh, dangerous. They should be immediately dealt with correct amount of medication, vaccination, and proper care. Though our medicines are not at all uh, that much effective on virus, but in near future we expect that we will uh, develop any sort of substitution for that, and uh, increased level of medication and vaccination will take. Coming on to viral in skin infection, right? So, what type of in skin infection are caused by virus? Viral skin infection shows symptoms like rashes, bumps. Uh, these viruses are uh, caused by skin skin infection. Some of airborne uh, too. Okay, some are airborne too. Uh, using uh, shared towels, communal swimming pools, all uh, put you at risk to catch uh, these viral infections. Okay, so. Um, Molluscum quantigiosum. This causes small bumps uh, that are flesh colored in children that uh, comprises from age uh, 1 to 10. However, it can uh, infect people at any age. Right? The bumps usually disappear after 6 to 12 months without treatment. Our piece simplex virus 1. This virus causes uh, cold sores which transmitted to uh, saliva by kissing or sharing food or drinks uh, from an infected person. So if you are coming in close contact with the infected person, you are much more likely to get, uh, get a viral disease. HSV2 causes genital herpes. Okay, Varsiella rooster virus, BZV. This virus causes chicken pox. Uh, which causes symptoms of itchy, oozy blisters, fever and fatigue. So, uh, when VZV causes disease, the uh, uh, patient develops the symptoms that are very much similar to uh, chicken pox and the blisters are there, always fever and fatigue the person is feeling. This is preventable by the vaccine that is 98% effective. People infected with chicken pox are at risk of changes at an older age. This is caused by the same virus. So, uh, it is said once you uh, get a uh, viral disease uh, uh, and when you are very less likely to get uh, uh, infected second time because the uh, immune system has a memory and it develops antigens uh, and antibodies uh, uh, that are required in order to protect your body from it. So, uh, the next topic of discussion is uh, are viruses alive? This is the main thing of discussion, and all the microbiologists and virologists have discussed this thing. Microbiologists still disagree. Those who say viruses are alive offer these reasons. They make copies of themselves to be generated. They require energy from their goals. The reasons uh, say, some say viruses are not alive, like they have no cells, okay, only protein coating and surrounding genetic material is present there. Okay, they don't reproduce uh, by themselves, they need no cells because they don't have the uh, required amount of resources that are uh, uh, essentially needed in the process of reproduction. And one thing is still undecided, do viruses respond to their environment? It's hard to say. Some argue that uh, they do not, while others say they do. It may uh, depend on a person who, who a person's own definition of life. So it was being said uh, in the case of COVID virus also, okay, it will uh, spread more uh, into the countries that are cold in uh, nature and especially European countries will target more. But just the opposite happened. That virus also spread in the uh, countries of Middle East and India is the worst affected country, though it is not a cold country. Okay, so uh, viruses did uh, transform themselves at a very fast pace. They do transform themselves according to the environment and according to the nature of the people and it is constantly changing itself. 
right uh, whenever they get a chance they mutate whenever they get a chance they infect whenever they get a chance they will increase its number so the viral disease viral diseases are extremely widespread infection uh, caused by a type of a microorganism uh, there are many type of viruses that cause wide variety of viral disease so common cold nose uh, and throat infection common viral diseases these are there so chicken uh, chicken pox flu uh, hiv hpv human papilloma virus it causes warts on the eyelids infectious uh, mononucleosis mumps measles rubella uh, changes viral gastrointestinal uh, stomach flu viral hepatitis okay viral meningitis uh, and viral pneumonia so all these type of uh, diseases are there that are very still very dangerous if not uh, treated properly viral diseases are contagious and spread from person to person when a virus enters the body and begins to multiply Common ways that virus spread uh, from person to person include uh, these uh, many modes of transmission. So, what are those uh, modes of transmission? If you see that breathing in air, uh, airborne droplets contaminate uh, contaminated with the virus. Eating food or drinking water contaminated with virus. having sexual contact with a person who is infected with a viral uh, with a sexually or sexually transmitted virus a indirect transmission from one person uh, to another person by a virus host such as mosquito tick or uh, field mouse so the virus uh, the mosquito bit a person uh, who was having a viral disease then it uh, again and it bit another person who was not having any sort of viral disease so in this manner also the mosquitoes are also transmitting uh, the viral infection from one person to another touching surfaces or body fluids contaminated by a virus so this is uh, known as indirect infection so if you, you touch a surface or body fluid that has been contaminated by a virus then it can create a big issue of infection so here you can see the uh, covid uh, virus how it causes an infection uh, in your uh, respiratory system how it enters the uh, your body the upper respiratory system and uh, going into your uh, you know, uh, internal or the secondary respiratory system it uh, infects the cells it kills the cell so virus enters over the respiratory cells Okay, virus enters the epithelium and vesicles, and it releases its uh, viral RNA transmitted protein. Virus focus on uh, vesicles, and its RNA is released. Virus assembly uh, takes place, and uh, because of that, these things they are, they are exported out, and the virus uh, ingested by an antigen present to cells. So this is how this virus is moving into your body. immune response is being readily affected right so it is ingested by uh, your uh, the apc antigen presenting cell and viral peptides are present on uh, that cell which help uh, t helper cells to combine with it and form c uh, cytotoxic t cells infected cells destroy antibodies to it so uh, it is somewhat uh, infecting the cells in the body and the b cells uh, like memory of b cells and t cells create so anti sars cov and uh, antibody are present so uh, whenever these antibodies are present whenever you are going to receive that uh, very virus into your system they will again act against it and they will block it or kill it so uh, this is how uh, a virus enters your body and it infects you and in the meanwhile uh, in this following the same process uh, you will experience that your uh, once you go and get the infection 
the virus has started to, uh, not to infect you. So, uh, there are food borne uh, viral infections. Uh, most viruses cause food poisoning, uh, some are more serious than others. The symptoms are referred to as viral gastrointestinus. Interstitis, uh, food borne viral infections are transmitted through fecal odor food. Uh, this means uh, the virus infects people when they ingest viral particles that we shed through the feces and infected of an infected person. So, uh, most importantly, it is a must to uh, practice and to observe uh, the thing, uh, things for uh, good sanitation facilities and person hygiene. When a person infected with this type of virus does not wash their hands using a wrist to cause a transfer of virus uh, to other by shaking hands, touching on surfaces, or preparing food. Infected virus, uh, water can also cause infection, spread the infection. Hepatitis A, to take example of that. This uh, uh, viral infection affects the liver. Okay, uh, for a week, uh, to several months. Symptoms include jaundice, yellowish discoloration of skin, or anorexia, nausea, loss of appetite, and diarrhea. And then it comes to rotavirus. Rotavirus causes severe watery diarrhea and can lead to dehydration. This is uh, most commonly, uh, this most commonly infects babies and young children. So uh, you can see all the viruses that are causing are very very lethal in nature. How long are viral infections contagious? Contagiousness refers to the ability uh, of a virus uh, to be transmitted from one person to another. Viral infections are contagious uh, for varying periods of time depending on the virus. An incubation period refers to the time between exposure to a virus or pathogen and emergence of symptoms uh, of contagious period of uh, a virus. It's not necessarily, necessarily the same as the incubation. So, contagious nature of a uh, virus uh, varies a lot on its species and its surroundings. So, if we observe the uh, respiratory virus disease, so uh, respiratory virus disease are contagious and are commonly uh, they commonly affect upper and lower parts of the respiratory tract or respiratory system. Common symptoms of respiratory viral diseases include uh, running or stuffy nose, uh, coughing, sneezing, fever, and body aches. So, uh, here you can see the example uh, of respiratory disease like flu, common cold, respiratory uh, viral infection, adenovirus infection all other types of SARS. So fatigue is there and all those things can and localized, swelling, pain, all these things. Chills are there, fever is there. So they all symptoms are very common on the people. And transmission, you all know that respiratory diseases or viruses are spread by droplets generating through coughing or sneezing. If someone uh, with a viral illness coughs or sneezes nearby and you inhale these droplets, you may develop the disease. The viruses can also spread uh, through contaminated objects such as doorknobs, river doors, and personal items. If you touch uh, one of these uh, objects and uh, touch your nose or eye, you could uh, develop a disease. So, uh, when you come on to the treatment, treatment of uh, viral diseases usually heal on their own. Okay, we don't have a very effective treatment for uh, these viral diseases, but over the uh, counter OPC medication uh, include nasal decongestion, uh, cuffs, suppressants, and pain relievers can help to reduce the symptoms. You can only reduce the symptoms, you cannot treat them. Okay, uh, in addition, STEMI flu and anti antiviral drug is sometimes prescribed if someone is in very early stages of developing the flu. So, uh, Temi flu uh, can be effective uh, in the very early stages of infection.
So prevention, you all know that now you have to uh, protect yourself and uh, from what things, uh, healthy hygiene, okay, uh, proper distance of uh, one meter is essential from the people, uh, two meters is essential from the people, and how to develop healthy hygiene and healthy sanitation habits. Treatment that we just discussed. So antiviral drugs such as uh, anticlovid may be given for chicken pox and for shingles. We will be using medications uh, such as acetaminophen can help to reduce the drugs of symptoms treating uh, axiomatous and viral disease focusing on managing symptoms. You can just focus on how you can manage those things. You cannot treat those things. We are technology is not much uh, developed. So uh, now we are going to uh, discuss the uh, quiz. So a virus is made up of uh, a, a protein coat and an nucleic acid. There is much, uh, not, uh, much more intricate details that are involved in virus. Okay, there is uh, nothing uh, that is uh, included in it and uh, not very much uh, of a structure is present in the virus. The protein code of viruses that encloses the genetic material is called capsid. This of the following statements of true about viron. So an infectious and fully formed virus particle are called virus. Okay. So which of the following is the genome of virus? DNA or RNA. Okay, it can uh, be either be present in a virus. Which of the following is the largest virus? Omega virus uh, is the largest virus that is present there. Which of the following statements are true about capsule uh, So, if going through all the options, uh, it is an individual unit of uh, capsule, capsule that are required to build uh, several of the capsules. Which of the following statements are true about the uh, papillomas? Uh, it is a spike like production that are uh, Found to be enveloped around the virus. An icosahedral capsid consists of both A and B, hexagonal capsules and pentagonal capsules all together. So, which of the following is, has a complex uh, symmetry? G4 phase or bacterial phase has a very complex symmetry. Uh, the viral envelope is made up of all the other things so protein, glycoprotein, lipids, and protein. So these are the references from where we have connected the data. So here uh, we finish our lecture. Thank you very much for your attention to us.